Oh, hey, uh, look at me. After more than two years of lurking in the basement talking about video games, I am now the marketing manager at Woodley Offices. If you haven't heard about Woodley Offices, they are the top one video game corporations you can find out there. They're so good, they just fired a thousand people to make this commercial. So, why am I here exactly? Well, we have a brand new game to show this year. I'm going to be showcasing a brand new pre-alpha build of this new game, featuring in-game cutscenes and revolutionary gameplay. Be warned, the cutscenes and gameplay will blow you off. Holy shit, I'm a trailer now? There are four ways to market your video games. Show actual gameplay and in-game cutscenes, show only pre-rendered cutscenes or gameplay, show nothing, or tweet. Any video game developer needs to showcase their latest games. Everything but the good stuff goes unnoticed. And what better way to showcase your games than making commercials out of them? Everyone has something to show for themselves, and marketing is the best way to do just that. I've dabbled in the marketing pizzazz for 3 years now, and to sum it all up, depression. But video games are a different tale. You have to show not only the graphics and story, but also its gameplay and uniqueness. And being the black sheep among such a large and diverse crowd can be challenging. Which is why creativity can make marketing campaigns so iconic and unique. That's right, using different colors and pixels. In the ye old days of gaming, most video games got attention through physical media. Flyers, magazines, publicity stunts, even trade show demos. Instead of only plastering the cover art for video games, screenshots of the actual gameplay of those games are also included. I didn't say they were pretty. You can just barely make out what's going on in these photos. But these were probably the only ways you can see what the actual game will look like, other than watching someone play the game. Around the time the Magnavox Odyssey released, which is the first video game console, it got its own commercial, and what did they include in it? To create a closed circuit electronic playground, Odyssey gives you all the exciting action of hockey and 11 other challenging play and learning games for the entire family. Day Old Water is a brand new kind of water. It looks... Smells... And tastes like a day has passed. Not only that, but you can also get dead nutrients from this water. This commercial is everything but good. Sure, it showcases the console, but it sounded like the narrator was reading the instructions manual. And the music. When we hop on over to the 90s, video games started getting their own commercials. These commercials have a lot of charm, probably because they had actual production back then. They weren't afraid to show 16 bits of diarrhea. And you're telling me that these trailers are better than these commercials? They used the real gorilla in the Donkey Kong Country commercial. Step 1 in making good video game trailers. Fuck beta. But these commercials aren't the best. They can be pretty weird. It can range from simple but fun little commercials giving a wonderful glimpse at a certain video game to a female mortar shooting out a baby with a lifespan that's as long as my height. No wonder Xbox called this commercial life is short. Most of these commercials contain the same structure. A bunch of weird stuff happens to one or more people, either a character or element in the video game shows up, either that character or the narrator describes the game in a wacky way, then diarrhea. A lot of these commercials do the right job of immersing viewers in the products that they're selling. The more iconic commercials often transport you into the game's world, while Super Metroid turns dogs into wimps. Step 2 in making good video game trailers. Fuck beta. Throughout this time period all the way to the mid 2000s, a good portion of video game commercials often compared their games to one another, establishing competitions to find the best game out of the two. This also applies to video game consoles. The commercials would often tell you why you should buy this thing over the other. Same structure, a guy in a business suit starts talking with two or more TVs showcasing the different games slash consoles in the background, guy says the reason why one is better than the other, then diarrhea. But around the early 2000s, we finally got actual trailers for video games. With E3 on the rise, people have started taking video games seriously. Marketing is flooded all over the place, but more importantly, 
importantly, dedicated trailers and sneak peeks at video games and consoles. Presentations are handled more professionally while still launching hype across the audience, back when we used to be creative instead of having dance numbers at every live show. For the trailers, since games are becoming more and more advanced and that a lot of games are getting actual lore and story, rather than just another simple puzzle platformer, usually trailers would often focus on the stories of the games rather than the gameplay. That's not to say the story is more important than the gameplay, but I find the story of a game hooks people better than the gameplay. I need the reason why I'm playing this guy in this setting. But reveal trailers can have a mix of both. Show a little bit of story and gameplay for the people to fondle with. The story is important for trailers so that they are self-aware in delivering the tone and emotions, while the gameplay can be the icing on the top. This can be done the other way around, though it can be quite difficult to execute it perfectly. Plus, there are tons of other ways to execute a great video game trailer. Let's start off with gameplay trailers. As the name suggests, these are trailers that show the gameplay. Sounds simple. Now, what classifies as a good gameplay trailer? Well, first it must show actual in-game gameplay, whether that's recording the game through in-game features or simply hiding the UI. Second, it must not show pre-rendered gameplay. Pre-rendered gameplay or cutscenes are basically CGI, and while they can give people hints of what the actual game might look like, it's not a great practice to market your game. Third. The gameplay must not look like ass. If the gameplay looks bad to begin with, don't show it. Either wait for the game to finish development or mask it with some elements in the trailer so it doesn't look terrible. Masking it is also not a good practice, but if you're really desperate in marketing your game, be patient. Lastly, it must not be something Call of Duty considers a gameplay reveal trailer. Do not call it a gameplay trailer if the entirety of your trailer is a bunch of story. Otherwise, call it a story trailer. Try not to be misleading with your trailer titles. That's not to say the Black Ops 6 trailer is bad, I mean it looks cool but I could barely see what's going on with the gameplay. The perfect example of a good gameplay trailer is the reveal of Super Mario Odyssey. The stories in Mario games are fine but they're not the main selling point of those games, which is why this trailer does so well. It encapsulates the best parts of the game, the simple but clean platforming, the different stages and level designs, and controlling various creatures using Cappy. This is a great gameplay trailer, unlike Starfield, everyone still remembers this game, right? The gameplay in its trailers looks dull, it looks like your average first person space shooter with nothing to note. Not only that, but the gameplay shown is nothing compared to the actual product. The game launched in a very catastrophic state, littered with bugs everywhere. The gameplay matters the most for every video game, it's the main principle, but there are times when the story matters more than the gameplay. Story trailers. Now since these act more like standard movie trailers, the only job here is to give a glimpse of what events are going to occur in the game world, that's the goal. And there are tons of ways to execute the story. What matters is if the way it is presented matches the tone of the actual story. For example, Soulsborne games often have trailers that show very little about the story, condensing large amounts of information in complex riddles, and the same thing applies within the games themselves. You get bits of the story through NPC dialogue, again, most of which speaking in riddles and through item descriptions. The players are forced to web all of that information to make sense of the story, which reinforces the sense of mystery in these trailers. There's no right or wrong way to make a story trailer so long as you're actually showing the story and that the story doesn't suck. So, making pre-rendered cutscenes in this case is totally fine, but showing the actual in-game cutscenes can be a bit better. You can also add a little bit of gameplay to up the mood of the trailer. Cinematic trailers can be easily mistaken for story trailers, though they still contain most of the major elements of story trailers. Usually, cinematic trailers are pre-rendered and their focus is to emphasize the story of the game rather than the gameplay. It's in the name, it's made to feel like a movie that sets up the story or world of the game but doesn't show how the game plays. 
Next, we have announcement trailers. These aren't much to write home about. You can just plaster a still image, add some suspense music, and there you go. But that's the least you can do with these trailers. It usually includes a mix of cinematic sequences or is simply brief shots of gameplay. It doesn't reveal much about the game, but it does warrant its development. There's so little that can go wrong with announcement trailers since you don't have much to present and that whatever you plastered onto the trailer can be easily fixed. Teaser trailers share some similarities, but they mostly differ based on the amount of information they reveal. Both announcement and teaser trailers present brief info, though announcement trailers are generally longer and give people an idea of what the game is going to be like by presenting some basic story elements or gameplay. Teaser trailers are more cryptic. They show much less information than announcement trailers and it can intrigue the audience without giving much away. The goal is to leave viewers speculating about what the game could be. Basically, a teaser has less info while an announcement trailer gives a more comprehensive look at the game. But games that are bound to release often upload launch trailers. These are released right before or on the game's release date to encourage folks to buy the game. Launch trailers are often a compilation of gameplay and in-game story scenes designed to showcase the game's best features. More importantly, there must be no pre-rendered cutscenes or gameplay in these trailers. The best thing to make people believe why they want to buy your game is if you show the actual game. The same can be said for DLC trailers or expansion trailers. These trailers usually highlight new features introduced in the expansion, showing how this new content enhances or extends the vanilla game. You can pre-render only if you're announcing the DLC, but once you're showing the contents of the DLC, it must be actual gameplay. But what makes a great video game trailer? The best video game trailers out there are those that not only captivate viewers, but also accurately represent the essence of the game. This can be done in numerous ways fitting. With the mass variety of types of trailers out there, it's best to maintain the soul of what makes your game beautiful while carefully maintaining that through the type of trailer you're creating. The best trailers are those that not only promote the game, but also leave a lasting impression. Wow. What would I give to play a game like that? Thanks for watching the reveal trailer. If you like it, consider leaving it a thumbs up. Better yet, subscribe to this channel while you're at it. If you do, you have a chance for a free giveaway right here at Woodley Offices. What's the reward? A freshly laid corpse of a former employee who petitioned for a salary increase. Am I reading this right?